Upon the release of the new Stardew Valley 1.6 update, Concern Ape has made some updates that nobody asked for, especially Gamer Gehar. Before we get into this video, if you just have a few seconds to spare, hit that subscribe button, it will really help me out. The more my channel grows, the more content that's going to come your way. Also, the 200 day video will be ready in a few days. Let's talk about the tea saplings. As we all know, especially if you watch my 100 day challenges, when you get Caroline to two hearts, she's going to teach you a very powerful recipe known as the tea sapling. It's super easy to make and it used to sell for a whopping 500 gold. You could absolutely spam these things in spring and just conquer the game easily within the first month and a half. You could get early access to Ginger Island. You could get to the desert. You could do Skull Cavern runs in spring if you wanted to. As long as you went the Georgia route, you could pay your way straight into the end game easily with these tea saplings. That is now much more difficult as these tea saplings have been literally cut in half. They now only sell for 250 gold instead of 500 gold. That is a huge difference. And it just means that the usual tea sapling tactics, especially that I utilize, are not really on the table anymore. So we need to get more creative now going forward when we're doing 100 day challenges. We can't rely on the potency of tea saplings to get us to that late game very early on. Next up, we're going to talk about clay farming. Clay farming is now a thing of the past. Now, I never really clay farmed myself, but a lot of people did and it was a great way to make money early in the game, especially if you don't use mods such as the CJB cheats menu or the item spawner and you wanted to play somewhat legitimately, you could more or less use the clay farming to get you those early game goodies. The process of clay farming was simple. All you had to do was to continuously hold one spot and hit it with a pickaxe and just repeat that process over and over again until you got a piece of clay. When you got that first piece of clay, you just had to go up one tile and over to the right one tile. And you just had to do that over and over again. It's a very simple pattern, actually, that you just repeat. And this would net you tons of clay. You could just head off to Rob and then sell the clay and get tons of money. But this has now been nerfed. Concerned Ape has changed the functionality around clay farming. He has made modifications to the Stardew Valley algorithm. It is now not possible to clay farm anymore if you play on the version 1.6. You can go back to previous versions and a lot of speedrunners do that, so you still might see clay farming runs in the future. Next up, we are going to talk about some of the nerfs made to foraging. We're going to talk about specifically the survival burger. It's no longer available when you hit level 3 foraging, it's been replaced with the cookout kit. Now, the survival burger gives 125 energy, 56 health, and a plus 3 to your foraging skill. It was an absolutely amazing item altogether. It was a great way to increase foraging early, but now you only get it at level 8 foraging. Next up, we're going to talk about fairy dust and the life elixir. These have also been nerfed. The price that you get for selling these has been reduced. Let me know in the comments how you feel about the, the fairy dust because it's now been reduced to only 300 gold per fairy dust. And this doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me because by the time you get your hands on fairy dust, you're in the end game. You know, 300 gold is pennies when you're in the end game. That's something you can make by literally just walking around the place with a parrot and killing some monsters easily. So I don't really see the point in that nerf at all. And normally when you're making fairy dust, you're not making it to sell it. You're making it to put it into a processing machine to finish that process immediately if you want to speed up a goal. Same with the life elixir. But let me know what you think anyway. Next up, we're going to talk about some changes made to casino items. We're going to look at the warp totems back home. Because after doubling the cost of these, they used to be 500 tokens. They're now 1,000. I don't really understand why he do this because the bus is literally just outside to take it back home. By the time you get to the desert, even if you passed out inside here, the worst thing that would happen to you is that you would lose 1,000 gold. You'd be saving money instead of trying to buy one of those totems at that price. <laughs> Next up, we're going to talk about the increase in the prices of bombs. That's right. The days of going to this lovely, cozy dwarf and just purchasing hundreds of bombs off him are over. You now have to fork out 1,000 gold for a mere regular bomb. Even cherry bombs are 450 gold. This will force more players to actually handcraft these bombs using copper ores, gold ores, iron ores to make each different type of bomb instead of going to the actual dwarf and purchasing them. 
Because if you can afford to buy a hundred bombs, you don't really need to be going to the Skull Cavern, in my opinion. You know, it kind of defeats the purpose. But let me know in the comments what you think about those price hikes. Next up, we are going to talk about changes made to Deluxe Speed Grow. You now need five bone fragments instead of coral to make the speed grows. Now, the bone fragments are not as common as coral before you unlock the Ginger Island. They become super easy to get when you get to the lovely Ginger Island because you have the bone nodes. They're all over the place, you know, beside Professor Snell's tent. But before you get there, the only real thing you can rely upon to get those bone fragments are going into the floor 70s and killing the skeletons. And even if you have the burglar ring, they don't drop a whole lot of bone fragments. The corals were a little bit easier because you can go to the tide pool area every Saturday. You can get tons of corals. You can even make fish ponds that would generate corals for you. So if you really wanted to, you could stock up on loads of corals early on in the game if you wanted to go that route. Not only has our lovely concerned ape nerfed life elixirs, he's also nerfed the mushroom cave, making it even harder to craft life elixirs. You don't get mushrooms every day now going forward. You have to wait every two days to get those fabulous, valuable mushrooms. Now, you could use and abuse mushroom logs, but they're every four days. So the days of farming hundreds and hundreds of mushrooms are now over unless you invest heavily in mushroom logs. There will come a time during your Stardew Valley adventure where you will need to venture out and get the wizard's ink so you can access his lovely magical terminal and get all the end game items. It's now a little bit more time consuming as the void mayonnaise is just a little bit harder to fish up. It's not as common as it used to be. It's still there. You just need a bit more patience. We're now going to talk about the house renovations. Now, the house renovations are really cool, but we used to be able to upgrade parts of the house after the full upgrade for free in 1.5. We now have to fork out extra money. We have to pay an extra 60,000 gold to get those same rooms. And that can be a lot of money, especially early on, if you're looking to upgrade the house and you want to focus more on the house than you do on the farm. Finally, and thanks so much everyone for listening to my rants, I'm on to the final rant, or sorry, the final change that Concerned Ape has made to the 1.6 update. We're going to talk about Prismatic Shard drop rates. They've now been reduced from meteors, it was reduced from 100% to 25% chance, and from Iridium nodes, it's been reduced from 4% to 3.5%. It's now a little bit harder to get our hands on those lovely Prismatic Shards. And you might say to yourself, well, a half percent isn't that big of a deal. I can tell you right now it is. I have done my fair share of Skull Cavern runs at this moment in time, especially with the 200 day challenge. I can tell you from experience, it's a huge difference. And the amount of prismatic shards that I've gotten in my latest challenge differs greatly to what I got in the previous 100 day challenges I've done when I was playing on the 1.5 version. And that is basically it. Rant over. Thanks everyone for listening. And I hope you all have a great week. A huge shout out to my channel members as well. Thanks so much everyone for supporting me. I really do appreciate it. The 200 day Stardew Valley video is going to drop in a couple of days time. I'm just in the final phases now of editing that video for you all. Thanks again everyone and subscribe to the channel if you like Stardew Valley content. There is going to be tons more Stardew Valley content coming your way in the next couple of days.